Hello everyone, my name is Prey Scooter, and welcome to more Golden Sun, the Lost Age on the Game Boy Advance. In this episode, we are going to gather up some few things and then head off to the rest of the plot. Now, a few things I want to talk about here. First off, this is post-commentary, because I lost the original commentary thanks to my computer dying. But, the other thing is, we are in a completely different location altogether. We're actually down here on Hesperia. No wait, this is Contigo. That's Hesperia. That's Gondawan. And that's 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 Bumfuck Egypt. Anyway, back here on Contigo, we have some new enemies for you here. Uh, we've got a Wargold and a Wolfkin. Unfortunately, the enemy bios, I kind of had to shoehorn in here. They share the same stats, practically, and they do the same thing. They'll use a double attacking move as fast as they can, with more than a regular attack. So... Yeah, any battles are going to be weird in this episode because they're going to be short, sweet, I'm going to have to try and time it and talk with it at the same time. If you guys like this post-commentary over the regular commentary, let me know. I'll actually do it then. I don't like to do post-commentary. So over, well, after that battle over in this direction, I'm going to do that a lot. I'm going like, to cut myself off. Over in this direction, there's the Dijin we can get. Uh, but first we have a new enemy here, a dangerous one, a Slayer. The Slayer here, it's not the ban, but it does have the ability to do an instant death attack. It doesn't do it as often as normal as normal enemies use their special abilities, but it can use it. And you'll probably see an example of it coming up pretty soon here. Uh, well, not the actual attack, you'll see that Jenna got killed right there by one. Now, this is Jin. I'm actually in the wrong spot now, it hit be right about here. And there it is, this is the Mars de Jin Core. There it is the enemy bio, if you if you guys can read that there. Uh, you guys can let me know if the enemy bios don't appear quite right too, by the way. I've been doing it like this because no one's saying different. Regardless, it's a Dijin. It's in the wild, so you don't have to save before fighting it. And just make sure you go all out on it. Quick warning, any of the Dijins you fight from now, here on out are going to have really strong attacks. Like that supernova. One of the two strongest fire attacks in the game. Alright, now we get this diamond bird down. Now, what's gonna happen here next? As I'm, well, I'm just gonna go melee. It's gonna cast Inferno, which is the other most powerful fire attack in the game. She was gonna melee it, it's done. So we get the. Excuse me, Mars Dijin Core. Ah, sound is loud. Kind of. Regardless. Uh, so there it is, the Marsh Jin Core. Its ability is to strike through an enemy's defense. That's something, that's a very nice one. A very nice to Jin, because, well, a lot of enemies have about. A lot of shield enemies have like 200 defense, so if you're trying to do a low level run of this game, that's a good to Jin to use. Uh, we have another new enemy here. This is the Tyranodon. I said this wrong previously. This guy actually attacks using screeching it, the screeching noises like Banshee's Howl and Stunning stunning Voice, both of which can actually stun you, but they, they basically scream at you to do damage. I think one of them does it coming up here. One does a regular attack, and then the other screeches. Here we go. Uh, other than that, these Pteranodons are not, we're not much of a trouble, at least in this recording and other recordings. God damn it, stop screaming. I don't like being yelled at. Loud noises! Alright, I'm checking, oh, checking my levels, because I was saying that, uh, compared to my practice file, I was almost, I was like one level behind my practice file. I've cut out the battles ahead of time, and I'm just going to keep talking. So, I mean, everything is cropped ahead of time, except for this. The, another new enemy, Town Runner. It's a fast little guy. I can't spell right. It's supposed to be circles down there. It's fast, and it's another one of those enemies that will use a special a special double damage attack rather than the regular attack. But we won't get to see that. We're going to make it a turkey. Yup. Alright. Now, me, now, previous me, I was explaining this. Uh, I was just going on like, Hey, yeah, look, we got, we got to go up here and go to Hesperia Settlement, and then we're going to go... Move the finger to the right. Okay, we're going to go from there to get to Hesperia Settlement. And here's me going, dude, dude, stop walking around the map with your finger and actually sail there. Anyway, I, I, here I'd be saying, let's speed it up and play some music. 
Unfortunately, because I'm doing post-editing, I don't have to put in music. And the game audio goes completely quiet, so actually I might have put in something in the background. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the, now we're almost well, after this battle. We pretty much are there. Random audio inser inser uh, insertion. <laughs> And something I didn't mention before is these lake-like areas, um, like inside of islands, if you're on your boat, you actually will not get attacked by seafaring or land-based uh, wild encounters. So, if you need to explore a place without, without using a sacred wings, or, yeah, sacred wings, or fearing a random encounter, go in, go in the lakes. But we're gonna get out well, we're going to go up too high and get out. Uh, luckily, I didn't have any random encounters here, and I'm going! And here we have the Hesperia Settlements. There's two things you can get here, one of which is this Dijin you'll see up there. The other is a treasure chest with some coins. You'll have to use growth, which if you don't remember what that is, you have to switch, you have to switch up Dijin between Jenna and Felix. And have either of them cast the growth spell. And switch them back, of course, because they're better. They're better uh, if they've been trained the class rather than random class switching. Anyway, uh, next part we got to do here is that box there is got to go through the hole. Fantastic move! Fantastic move a second time. There you go. That box that I'm pulling on here has got to go in the uh, spot in the far left there. So we begin the arduous task of pushy pushy block. Grrr! Grunt! Grunt! Oh my! But I have one last trick up my sleeve, Sonic! Original the character! Do not steal! No! <laughs> I love that thing. Anyway. The box gets dropped out in a manner like that, and if you notice, there was no falling sound for that box hitting the ground or dropping off a ledge. Bit of a glitch, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, just hop on the box. I'm saving here just because I think it's a fight. This is not one you have to fight. You just gotta hop on this box, shuffle your ass all the way to the right, and talk to it. And it's like, God damn it, fine, you figure it out, I'll go with you. And random cut in the sound there as it goes to the next part in the recordings. Tinder, it's a, re it's a reviving spell for Jenna. So now everyone has access to a revitalizing sp or some form of revive. Shiva and Piers have Waters of Life, Jenna has that Djinn, and Felix has an actual spell for it. And here's 166 coins, that's the only other thing here. Now what I'm going to be doing here is, well, I'm going to, there's actually a cut coming up here, no, not a audio or a voice cut, but it's a cut where I'm going to go over to Yalam and get those two rusted weapons you saw. I'm going to get those made into weapons for Sh Jenna and Sheba. I'm also going to sell my nuts in the process. So if I would stop talking to the camera like a retard. Yes, Felix, don't worry, I realize I'm babbling on here in the original recording, but you have to excuse that. God damn, I talk a lot sometimes, don't I? There we go. I'm leaving now. And I just left, but the trick is I told you that I did a cut, so everyone has a new weapon. Well, <laughs> der. G Jenna and Shiva have new weapons. Jenna has the Pirate Saber, which can inflict venom. Venom is a more deadly version of poison. And here I thought I messed up the names, so I'm kind of bouncing between two. Plop. Anyway, Shiva has the Goblin Rod. Hold up, dude. Pull it up. Thank you. Which has Sargos Sargasso, as you saw there. It's basically an instant death attack on a weapon. So now with Venom, instant death, and agility drop, I am set for life when fighting random encounters. Uh, and keep in mind, instant death attacks do not work on bosses. And you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Thank you. Now, <laughs> uh, now uh, up here, we're going to come into a cave. Stop, stop. The cave is to the right. 
Yeah. Well, I suppose it's just my... Oh, shoot. My computer just went into sleep mode there for a sec. Uh, basically, we gotta go on this right path of the river here and uh, go to this cave. This cave is how you get to the shaman village. And now, there are gonna be random encounters while you're here. And, um, oh yeah, something to note. There's a Dijin up there. You can kind of see his feet. It's a water Dijin. We're going to come back for that at a later point. We got us that. Uh, we're going to come up here and use Whirlwind on this. I think... Oh yeah, I used Cyclone on mistake. And then I think I set Whirlwind to a quick button. Yes, I do. Uh, but now something to note. Uh, all the Dijin that we have to... We found all the Dijin that are hiding in random ass locations on the overworld map. That means every single Dijin we have to find here till the end of the game is in a location that you can see, that you'll be able to see instead of having to guess. So that's always good to have. And we can't get that Dijin because we require an ability to pick up those boulders. Those fans of Golden Sun 1 or fans that know this game will know what I'm talking about. But here we are, we're in the shaman, we're good, well, we're approaching the shaman village. There it is. The shaman village. Now, I try and go in that door because there, you can get a Dijin through that door. Unfortunately, the, you, won't, you can't get in there unless you go to a, <clears throat> excuse me. Unless you go to uh, the plot of Ansem of the Road. As you notice, no one will talk to you here. So everyone's an asshole. <laughs> I don't know what, what the real deal is, uh, if you'll bring up Mind Read. Thank you. Basically, they don't like for they don't like tourists. Which I can't blame them. I'm not a fan of tourists. Stop calling her weird names, dude. So and now we have one less item to get say before we call it a video. Uh, go into the inn and head downstairs here, as you're seeing. You're going to have to do the, gro the growth, uh, use the growth spell, which is going to require you to switch to Jin. Seeing as Jin has more to Jin than Felix, this is pretty easy now. And up here is an awesome item for Shiva, actually. Yes, yeah, switch to Jin. God. I'm so, I'm so disorganized sometimes. So, we get the spear gloves. These raise PP if memory serves. Yes. So we give those to Shiva. Now those cursed fan braces, I think is what they were called. Bone armor, excuse me. Give those to Jenna. It's a better equipment for her. So we win. Hooray. Prize money. Stop talking. Anyway, we're coming up on the end of it here. I'm I'm ending off the episode here. Uh, just for this time, and I'm going to get it up to you guys as soon as I can online, because I was late today due to my computer dying. But what I'm going to show you here quick is something funny happens if you talk to the innkeeper before you complete the next plot event at some point. <laughs> he also was signed like Luigi's. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Prey Scooter, signing out.